Hello and welcome to the video. Today I will be showing you guys a quick look at the game Hearthstone. So if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of a little spin-off of World of Warcraft, which um, I honestly don't play at all. I've never played it in my life. Um, however, you don't have to know anything about World of Warcraft to be able to play this game. It is a free-to-play game, which means you can choose to either play the entire game without spending a penny on it, and it'll be very fun, or you might want to make things a little bit easier on yourself, spend some real cash, and yeah, buy some cards. I'll show you really quick. So as it goes in the game now, you get one pack of cards for every 100 gold that you get, or yeah, 100 gold. So the way I've seen it is I will get enough for a gold pack about every two days. And that is because you have daily challenges, and typically they give you about 50 gold. So if you, I mean, obviously simple math says you'll get a pack every two days. And that's not that bad, but when you look at it, you have to pay $3 for two packs, yada yada. Um, I haven't bought anything yet, I'm not really planning on it. But yeah, here's the quest log. So right now, these quests will come up in the bottom. Um, currently there are none because I finished mine for today. Usually a uh, daily quest comes up and I think they pile up. I haven't seen yet. I haven't played too long. But I've played two separate days and they have come up down there. Above is your hero levels, so I'll show you a little bit about heroes in a little bit. I've been playing a lot in the druid, the hunter, the mage. Um, it's kind of weird how the entire system works. Now, let's just look at my collection. So it's a collecting card game, it is not a trading card game. If you look at all of these cards here, they all have little values in the top left corner. That value signifies their mana cost. Now when we get into a game, I'll actually show you a little bit about what the mana cost does. Um, and if you look down here, it says 0, 1, 2, all the way through 7 plus. Um, these label the number of mana that it takes to use this card and I'll, like I said, I'll describe more about that when I'm in the game. And the bottom left corner is your attack. Now, this attack says it does 8 damage, and he also has 8 droplets of blood, which means he has 8 health. So if he attacks a card that has 6 health and... S sorry, 6 attack and 6 health, then it turns out um, the other card will die, and then this card will have 2 attack left and 2 health left, and that's how the game works. Now, if you're looking through your correct collections here, right now I'm on a druid page, right up here, and then if I switch, now I'm on the Hunter page, the Rogue page, the Shaman page, the Warrior page. Now, you're collecting for different packs of cards because there are different heroes in the game. Now, they do have just plain normal cards. Now, let's see, I'll show you. So right here, you can choose your hero. There's the Warrior, Shaman, Rogue, Paladin, Hunter, Druid, Warlock, Mage, Priest, and they all have their own little special abilities. So Hunters are really good at like fighting, I guess. Druids have a lot of special abilities that they use the Earth for, so like healing themselves, stuff like that. Warriors are kind of like Hunters, but they're just the brute force. Um, many other things. I haven't gotten to the game much. You can see Hunter, I have everything unlocked. Druid, I have everything unlocked. Mage, I have everything unlocked. Warrior, I have 14 out of 20 basic cards, 12 out of 20, 10 out of 20, and so on. So I haven't played to my full potential yet, but that is what I have so far. Now you see here it says 14 out of 20 basic cards. That means for the warrior class there are 20 cards that you can only use in that particular warrior class. So if I select it here, it's going to show me. Now if I want to have something with zero mana cost, there's one card that is in the warrior class that can do so. So if I select that card, it's adding it to my deck. Now you can create your own custom decks before you go into battle, which is um, something strategic you'll have to do later. When you're a beginner, you won't have to worry about it, and I'm at the point where I have to start worrying about it, so I'm not a master in it yet, I just know that I'm going to have to do it. So right now we're on the page of zero mana cost, I'll go to one mana cost, and you see this little thing pop popped up? That is because there are neutral cards, so these cards work for any class you have no matter what. And they have quite a bit of them actually. So now I'll go to the second page, everything like that. Okay, so Let's describe a little bit more about the cards. They all can have their own little abilities. You see right here, battle cries, taunts, charges. Um, this one has nothing. Now, like I was saying, 
you'll have mana crystals and I'll get into that now actually so your first turn of the game you'll only be able to use one mana crystal once you use it it is gone for that turn and you cannot use it till the next turn you use these mana crystals to put the cards onto the playing field so once they're on the playing field you don't have to use the mana cards again so your first turn you're gonna wanna have a card that has a one mana cost and if you put that down then it will be on the field until something defeats it or if you commit suicide which that's actually works sometimes so um, yes, the one mana cost, um, and then in your second round you'll have two mana crystals that will come up, and you will be able to use both of them. So your first mana crystal that you used in the first round will actually recharge and let you use it again. So you don't have to worry about um, you don't have to worry about actually saving your mana crystals; they will be refunded every round. And there are actually different types of. Um, I know there's zero. They're in like the mage class. That actually gives you um, two more mana, mana crystals like per round. So you have to use the card. It costs zero mana to do it, and then it gives you two more mana for that round. But that's a lot of um, more advanced things that I'm not going to get into. Just I'm going to get into the basic things for this video. So let's look back at some of these abilities. Now, one of my favorite abilities is actually taunt. Now. Taunt, it describes it as enemies must attack this minion. So when you have cards in the field, if say the enemy has a lot of cards and your hero's health is going down, you can place a taunt card onto the playing field to make the other team attack your taunt card before they can attack anything else. So if you play like four taunt cards and the other team has four um, people attacking, they will not be able to talk, attack your hero at all. Sorry, And that's one of my favorite things to have in the game so far. Down here we have the Stone Tusk Boar. Now, this, the Stone Tusk Boar is a 1-1-1. One, one, one. It's an even split all the way throughout. So it costs 1 mana, it can do 1 attack damage, and 1... Uh, sorry, it's got 1 health. Now, say you were to put this on the field, you can attack the enemy's hero without taking any damage to itself. But if you were to attack a card that has at least 1 attack damage, this card would die, and that would be suicide. But if you're taking out a card that has say five attack and only one health it actually would be a very good thing to do you have to really think about all the different things that you can do so this card says charge and when it when you have a card with charge as soon as you place it down you can actually attack with it normally when you place a card you actually have to wait an entire turn until you can use that card but if your if your card has a charge on it then you can attack immediately so these cards are very good for getting your damage in right away now i know there's some even cards that are like level six that have that yep so level six charge so putting this down you're guaranteed to get in the shot um, with five damage before you die because it's only got two health so when you place this card down it's costing six mana and typically you're only going to get that five damage in and the next round you're going to get taken out because your five damage is threatening to the other team now the card next to it's actually a very good card because it has a six mana cost is pretty heavy but then again it has a taunt six attack and five damage so depending on how many cards they have in the field and how many cards they have in their hand you may be able to have this card last for about three rounds before they take it down so when you think about it that way you can actually get an 18 damage before this card is even done so a lot of this is playing in strategy and you have to unlock a lot of cards and collect them it's nice to look through them look at all their abilities memorize them stuff like that it is a very very complicating game and in the beginning you tend to win a lot but then you start playing harder people and it seems like you might have to start buying cards at least that's what it seems like to me um, I'm just not sure I haven't played it quite enough yet to be able to decide that. But let's just jump into a game. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I guess I can't. Do you want to finish automatically? Sure. So now it's gonna automatically just put my cards in, and hopefully it gives me a nice little curve. And when I make my curve is if I look at here, you want it to be bell curved a little bit towards the uh, one, two, three range, or two, three, four, because those are the cards you're going to be able to use most often. Once you get up to the seven plus range, you're only going to be able to use one or two of those cards total because the game is going to be close to done before you can get there. Um, so having two and three cards, especially if they have good abilities, is a very good thing to have. So having this curve is a very nice way to establish your card deck. 
So I'm going to go done. I'm going to go back to the main menu. Um, play mode is where you play online against other people. So if I go into play mode, I'll just show you really quick. You can do a casual game, which is just kind of practicing, but you're playing against real people online. And there's also ranked, which I haven't even attempted yet because I know I'm definitely not good enough. I don't have enough cards. Um, and you can see here, once you go into play mode, you can choose from your decks that you just created. So I, I created a custom druid deck, a custom shaman deck, and you just saw me create the custom warrior deck. Now, I'm not going to hit play. I'm going to go back. They also have the arena. Ooh, I don't know if I can do this. Yep, it costs 150 gold or $1.99 to do this. But, depending on how many games you win, you can get very good rewards because they go by how many wins you get before you get three losses. And if you get, I believe it's nine, you get a lot of good things. But I won six last time and I got, uh, I believe it was like two good card packs. Um, they let me play it for free the first time, so you don't have to pay the 150 gold charge. Now, Practice mode is the only other mode available right now, and right here you can choose your custom decks again, or you can go back to just basic decks where every card is mixed in, and, um, excuse me, so, right here you can see Druid's completed, Hunter's completed, Mage is completed, this is where you earn your cards, well I shouldn't say that, um, when you start out you only get one hero, and then you'll have to unlock the other ones by playing against them in practice mode, and once they're played against, it's a very good place to practice your skills, test out your decks, and even go against people to unlock all of the basic cards for your hero. So Warriors 14 out of 20, so that'd be a good one to play through. Um, just you can go normal or, or expert, expert's very hard so I wouldn't recommend it right away. Um, and I will play against a mage and then you simply hit play. And right now I'm just using the basic deck. I did not use any of the uh, custom decks created, which you can use eventually. I just am not right now. Excuse me. I'll just leave it. I was going to change my microphone settings. So, right now they give you cards, and you can choose to either keep or replace them. So right now this is a three mana cost. Whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge which that's actually a very good card so I'm going to keep that. Heroic Strike, give your hero plus four attack this turn. That's a good card, especially for a two mana cost. Two mana cost, um, the Murloc Tidehunters, I love these because they do summon a 1-1 one, one Murloc Scout and that means one attack, one health. So just by playing this card you actually get two minions on the field. And I will turn in this one because uh, yeah they summon a 2-1-2, two, two. I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to keep all four cards but you can turn it in. Now, if you go first in the round, you actually only get three cards. However, I'm going second, so you get a total of four cards, and then you actually get the coin, which allows you to use an extra mana crystal in your round. So as you can see down here, like I was describing earlier, it is round one, so you only have one mana crystal. And you can see none of my cards have a one mana cost. But, oh, sorry, this is the hero power over here. Um, so hero powers... Um, this one gives you armor, some of them give you attack, some of them give you attack and armor, some of them heal, stuff like that. Um, I, one even takes some of your health to draw new cards, which can be very helpful because sometimes you run low on cards. Um, but I'll show you kind of a typical move in this game. So first, what I would do is, since I can't use anything, I might go into the next turn, but I kind of want to have some things on the field so I can attack the next turn. So I'm going to use my coin and you just simply click it and click it again or drag it. So now I have two mana crystals I can use this turn. So I can either gain two armor for my hero or I can use the heroic strike which I don't have I, I mean I don't feel like using it. I want to get some cards on the board so I'm going to use the murloc tide hunter. I'm going to click and drag it onto the field. So like it said it does spawn in Burlock Scout, which is 1-1. One, one. So next turn, they don't have anything on the field right now, so they won't be able to attack me out of their face cards, but they might be able to attack me out of their deck, or their hero might be able to attack me, see, they just attack me out of their deck. So right now I have nothing, so I wasted that mana crystal, and I have nothing else I can do right now. The only thing I can do is give my hero 4 attack, which I'm going to do, might as well. So then, this is my hero. They rarely do attacks or anything like that, but they can. So I'm doing my hero against their hero. I take four of their health, they don't take any of mine. And that's all I can do, so I will end my turn. So right now I'm looking at the third round as being this card. Oh, see? And that was their special ability. It takes two mana to do your special ability. So they use two of their mana to take one of my health. 
Okay, so I have three mana crystals. Charge, give a friendly minion plus two attack and charge. However, I don't have any minions on the field, so I cannot play that card. The cards you can play are highlighted in green. This is the only one I can do, which is a War Sun Commander. Whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, give it charge. So this might be good, because next round I will be able to summon a minion with three or less attack. That would be right here, and then I would give it a charge. So I'm going to use this, so next round I will be able to use that card immediately, along with its attack. So you can kind of see how the dynamics of the game play around. Oh, they're attacking me. Okay, so they summoned a beast. Um, there are different card types, so you can see... Oops. Execute. Okay, cool. So the river Crocolisk <laughs> is a beast. It, um, right down there you can see, I can't scroll over it. It's a beast card. There are some minion cards, beast cards. See, these are all minions labeled at the bottom. There are different cards. So warrior classes typically like beasts because... Oh no, hunter classes, I'm sorry, not warrior. All right, now it's my turn. So remember from last round we played this, it says whenever you summon a minion with three or less attack, you give it charge. So now if I play this, it's got three or less attack, I will give it charge and I will be able to attack. Now I could attack the river Crocolisk or I could attack the hero. I'm gonna put the card out first and right now this card is activating this card so I can use it. Which, now I have the choice. I can do five damage to the hero or I can use my 3 damage 5 health to kill this, but their 2 their two attack will take 2 off my attack. However, now this is a taunt card, which means they have to attack me before they can attack anything else. So my strategy says I don't have to attack him because next round he has to attack me. So what I'm going to do is attack their hero. Just a little bit of strategic things to think out. Now they have a Raptor in, and those things do 3 damage and only 2 health, so it might be beneficial for me to take that out this round, and I might. I might just commit suicide with this, Ooh, because, uh, I don't know. Okay, destroy a damage enemy minion, however that one's not damaged. Now I have 5 mana crystals, and what I could do is use my two mana crystals for my hero power and give me a two armor and then use the other four for this. Um, not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save these for later. Those will be very useful. Um, give a friendly minion at plus two attack and charge. So I think he's a minion. Yeah, I'm gonna let this be because the raptor's gonna have to attack my taunt again so I'm gonna leave it out there I'm going to give this minion attack and charge so now I have five two and then now I can beef up with some armor so you can kinda see how the turn based mana system works and then I can end my turn because I have nothing else to do now this card I actually like it transforms one of my cards into a sheep so my taunt is now gone um, unfortunately that card is a bitch. <laughs> um, a lot of these cards are. So right now it's 6 mana. Um, I guess the beginner would choose to put the 6 down because it has 6 attack and 7 defense. Now I also have these, which are destroy an enemy minion. And right now this has 3 attack and I'd rather not... So the way I look at it is I could put this on and then I would have to attack one of these and one of them would still be alive. But now if I use an execute, it would be one mana cost and then I would not be able to use this because it's six mana cost. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to use execute and I'm going to use it on the raptor because he's the damaged minion. Now he's gone. I only have five mana so I can no longer use the boulder fist ogre. The boulder fist ogre, sorry. Um, but I could use this, which I will and it will summon another minion next to it and then I will put out a murloc because I have one remaining mana and right now these are all highlighted green because they are all able to attack because of this charge card every time I put a minion out it is able to charge right away so you can see how this card would be very useful to me so now I have two attack two attack two attack two attack now if I attack with this one I will not die if I attack with these I will because this one attack will kill my one health so what I'm going to do is do this so I can stay on the field. Attack the hero. 
once the hero's health is zero, you win. So that is what I'm going to try to do. And right now I've gotten some very good cards that have helped me damage their hero, and I have used some strategy, I'll give myself a little bit of credit, to make it so I'm in this position. Some games I win with 30 health, some games I win with 1 health, and that's why it's a fun game. So, I could go for the Boulder Fist Ogre now, because it's kind of a more beefy character they have to worry about. They're going to have to attack this to get the 7 health down, and then I could play just... No, I couldn't do that. Okay, so this would be a 2-1 for 2 mana cost, and I could not use that. Okay. So the best choice here is to use the Ogre, and then I'm going to have one less mana crystal I won't be able to use because I charged them wrong, and I won't be able to end it this round. But then again, everything else is going to attack their hero. And right now, this has been a much easier game than normal. They haven't had very many cards down. When they put them down, I have been able to deal with them quite well. So that's typically how the game works. And right now, it's going to be very easily ended. I will put a taunt card out there. I could make make this last for quite a long time. But, oh no, this card isn't... Oh, they killed my card. Okay, so they, yep, they destroyed the card that gave the charge to any minions I put down. So I cannot attack with these ones. However, if this were to go on past this turn, my taunt, they'd have to attack this. And then I'd have all these cards with two attack to attack whatever I want to. So what I'm going to do... Let's do that... Well, I mean... Um... I just feel like getting as many things off the board as I can, so... Clear board! And that is how you are a beginner at this game, and this video is long enough already, so I am going to put up a second one. Going a little bit into more depth, I'll play another practice game and just talk a little bit more about how things work. So I'll be right back with that video, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned.